ah, get out of there. Okay, so if you haven't figured out, we're doing a lot of cause and effect in this chapter. And, you know, we had all these causes for the Industrial Revolutions. We're moving on, and one thing leads to the next. There's a big causality change, chain. So we see this growth of agriculture. The growth of agriculture led to the desire for more clothing. The way we were making clothes was terrible. It was taking way too long to make anything. And so textiles need to change. First, machines. I'm not going to go into all of the new uh, machinery that's going to develop for uh, textiles. That's, that would take forever, and it's not important for our class. But one of the first machines to really pop out is the spinning jenny. The spinning jenny made threads. Uh, this is probably a more advanced version. The original one, I believe, it could only make uh, eight threads at a time. But remember that, ah, all this system here. I mean, how much thread do you think these ladies are making doing it the traditional way by, you know, by hand? They're making one spindle at a time. Well, now we have a machine that can do the work of eight peasants at one time. Now, uh, all you need is one person to turn a crank, one person turns the crank to move the machine, and other people would just continually feed the raw material into the machine, and it would continually make thread as long as you could keep cranking it, as long as you could keep feeding it in. Still required human labor, and obviously the machine's going to break, cotton's going to get lost, and the machine's going to get stuck, uh, but this machine was eight times more efficient at making threads. That's an eye-opener. The seed drill was a big change, and it got people thinking about simple machinery and that machines could actually improve our lives. Well, now, I mean, you could just look at this and say, wow, it's eight-fold more uh, improved. And then anybody can, you know, people started saying, well, we can make this better. What if we tweaked this? What if we changed that? What if we then use this and made an auto loom and we could, you know, have the threads uh, turned into fabric more efficiently as well, too? So technology is going to ramp up very quickly. Most of these machines originally, like the prototypes, are oftentimes hand-powered, but it's not too long before somebody hooks it up to a water wheel. Remember, England has a lot of rivers, and so it was a pretty available uh, power source. Instead of hand-cranking it, well, we'll just hook it onto a water wheel, have a pulley system to move that, and then you don't need this person anymore. Now the machine can work faster. Water has more power, more energy than a human, uh, and you can work 24 hours without somebody's arm getting sore. So pretty amazing power source. Clothing production is going to ramp up and become much faster. Still requires workers, but now, you know, every, every machinery making life way more efficient, making technology or manufacturing way more efficient. Big change, though. Big change. If you look at these machines, they're huge, giant, uh, usually iron contraptions. Uh, you can't have this in your house for a lot of reasons. First of all, most peasants... You know, you could afford the basic materials to make your own clothing, sewing needles and such. Uh, probably make your own spinning wheel. But this you're not going to be able to make yourself. All right, This is going to cost a fortune. Most peasants would not be able to afford that machine. Let's say they scrapped together their money and bought a single machine. Okay, well, a single machine does not make all of the clothing. You would need, you know, eventually factories are going to have all of these different machines to do every process. So machines to make thread, uh, machines to turn that thread into uh, fabric, and then so on and so forth. Eventually sewing machines and all these other technologies come out. So you'd need a lot of these different contraptions. You wouldn't just focus on one. So next thing, they're big and bulky. It would take up a good chunk of your house. Next thing, they're powered by water wheels. And most peasants probably did not have a river running through their living room to power these machines. I guess they could get a hand cranked model, but they're going to get outpaced by efficiency by the water wheel powered ones and the machines that come later. So, long story short, you're not getting this machinery in your home. That's that's the end of it. New factories start to develop next to rivers, and these factories are going to you know hire people. So these new factories are going to have people leave their homes and come to work. And you think, duh, that's how life is today. Most well, with the exception of right now, most people don't work. Uh, from home uh, you know, but for most of human history we did for most of human history you lived and died within about a five mile radius of where you were born you lived and you worked on the farm T typically most people were agricultural laborers you worked on the farm you, you maintained the farm and the farm life uh, in the winter you worked with your family maybe you made clothes all winter and you tried not to die and you basically lived with your family worked with your family and lived at home constantly now, for really the first time, we're going to see huge segments of the population have to leave their homes and go to work in these factories. That's going to change a lot of things. So uh, we'll talk more about those changes later on, but it's going to have a huge impact on women's lives. 
part of the reason why it's going to have a huge impact on the lives of women is because women were traditionally associated with making clothing. A lot of the first employees to be hired into these factories are going to be women, uh, and it just seemed like the natural fit. Also, women were easier to control. You could pay them less. There's a lot of reasons we're going to go into later uh, for a lot of really horrible sexist region reasons, but uh, for the most part, women are going to be a lot of the first people 